There are many words to describe Martin Reckless Larson. Prodigy, leader, LCS champion. Even at only 20 years old, Reckless has had quite the journey in his esports career. Through success and struggle, highs and lows, this is his story. Reckless was born on September 20th, 1996. In his early years, Reckless was a talented soccer player and looked to be heading towards the path of a pro athlete. However, when he was 14, he injured his knee and sidelined from the pitch, played League of Legends for the first time. He was instantly hooked and quickly rose through the ranks in solo queue, gaining the notice of a number of pro teams. Already hailed as a rare talent, Reckless had the chance to substitute on teams such as SK Gaming and Team Black. With the latter, he attended the 2012 MLG Pro Circuit Summer Arena and got his first taste of high-level competition in sets against Azubu Blaze, Team Solo Mid, and Team Curse. In November of 2012, just past his 16th birthday, he was picked up by Fnatic as their starting AD carry, becoming one of League's youngest pro players ever. I didn't take it like super duper serious, uh, but once they invited me to go down to the house, it was like a very good feeling for me uh, because I felt like I could leave school behind and take the chance of going there and like meshing well with the guys and just being a good player in general. After his arrival, Fnatic won three tournaments during November and December of 2012. The Raid Called Dominance 1, Dreamhack Winter 2012, and the Thor Open 2012. It, Fnatic goes home with the win from the Thor Open. $10,000 in their pocket. They During this time, they also had impressive finishes at larger international tournaments, taking second at the legendary IGM Pro League Season 5 behind Team Wii and IEM Season 7 in Cologne, further hyping up Reckless's already impressive reputation. And SK Telecom T1 are going to win Intel Extreme Masters Colonia, taking down Fnatic 2-1. With his career already off to a flying start, Reckless would encounter his first obstacle with the creation of the LCS. Under LCS rules, Reckless was a year too young to play for Fnatic, and in December 2013, he was removed from the main roster to later be replaced by Yellowstar as starting AD carry. With Yellowstar, Fnatic successfully qualified for the first season of the LCS, meaning that Reckless would have to wait a full year before he could rejoin. Unable to play with Fnatic but not wanting his skill to rust, Reckless found a new home playing alongside Young Buck, Kautard, Unlimited, and Shook. The roster was quickly picked up by the Copenhagen Wolves, and it was agreed that Reckless would play for the team on loan from Fnatic until he was able to rejoin the team. And he has been locked down from Nami. That's gonna be a beautiful pentacle. And wow, once again, Reckless just goes huge. With the otherwise strong roster bolstered by Reckless's tremendous skill, the Copenhagen Wolves rocketed to the top of the challenger scene. They were a terror at any event they attended, taking first at DreamHack Summer 2013 and countless EU West Challenger Series Cups. Later in the year, Reckless helped the Wolves earn a spot in the 2014 EU LCS Spring Promotion Tournament. From the Copenhagen Wolves, and they were the big favorites coming into this game once again, and they are gonna win that position in the Spring Promotional Tournament. Their dreams of becoming an LCS team very much alive right now. And I think right now they got to be very happy with themselves, but also a little bit worried because they already know this is Reckless's last game with them. They Throughout his time with the Wolves, Reckless was a dominant force. And while Fnatic had taken back-to-back -back LCS titles and third to fourth at Worlds in 2013 without him, anticipation for his return was building. On November 22nd, Reckless was officially made the starting AD carry on Fnatic. And just a day later, he made his comeback at IEM Season 8 Cologne against Counter Logic Gaming. Mitch made the point that, you know, they've been away and they've had a bit of fun and they wanted to wind down afterwards. Perfectly acceptable, of course, but they come back now. It's difficult to measure where they're going to go up against CLG. At the same time, though, it's still Fnatic. They've been together for so long. Yes, maybe they're swapping in Reckless, but he's been living with them, like training with them, following them around for so long. They've been playing Dua Q. I know Yellow. Star and Rickles have been playing so many games together, so they're fine-tuned already. If you play Fnatic, what can we expect from that matchup down the lane? A stomp. That's what you can expect. A one-sided stomp. Like, me and Afro are really good. 
And like I said, I think Reckless kind of overrated. We'll go for the red. Meanwhile, Yellow Star down the bottom. The flash comes in. Has Double Lift gone too deep here? Reckless is going to turn around. He does manage to get the kill. That's a great flame. He gets the double kill. Reckless strikes back. That last fire that just happened, Link, he tried to alter Reckless. He tried to hold him down. Just want to, to stop right there for that, but it didn't matter. Expect it. He got the black shield up. He was able to keep him alive. And from that, they take that victory. Very well done by Fnatic. He had already proven himself time and time again on the international circuit and in the challenger scene. Now, it was time for Reckless to show the LCS what he was made of. His debut was better than anyone could have hoped for. And now Yenistar gets pulled in towards the tower. Diamond joins them at the top here. This could turn out horribly for Fnatic. We think it's going to be a double kill. The super mega death rocket. Oh, and Diamond gets flashed away by Reckless. But can he close the gap? He's going to go in towards Reckless. He should. No. Barrier bait. While Fnatic had some bumps along the way in Reckless's rookie LCS split, the team surged into the playoffs and defeated Alliance and SK Gaming to claim the title. Teammates chase on to warm him, and that is going to be the surrender vote. Fnatic are the world champions. What the world champions? They are the champions of the spring split. Reckless now, of course, still the new guy in Fnatic, but coming in here, been performing so well the entire season. And he didn't step down his playoffs. All the while, Reckless was impressive, and he was named the playoff MVP. A week showing at All Stars Paris 2014 led Fnatic into a poor start in the summer split. The base, you can see the Nexus turrets are tumbling, and SK Telecom will reach the finals. What a fantastic performance by SK Telecom, no doubt about it. 26 minutes gone in this game, and they have dominated Fnatic tomorrow. Where did Fnatic go from here? That's the yeah. question. They've won the European splits three times running now. Clearly, they are the number one team in Europe. No I doubt. think they need to get out of their their slump. It's hard to say that they are in a slump because they did win the European split, but they started off so strong. They almost need a new infusion of some kind. I don't want to say they need a roster change, but yeah. they need a change of some kind. They struggled to find consistent wins until the back half of the split when they once again surged with a record of 12-2 and two in the final five weeks. Fnatic's bot lane in particular came alive down the stretch, and Reckless's Vayne and Lucian decimated the opposition. The assistance goes up, connects with Youngbug. Tower's being secured in the background, and Youngbug is going to get dashed on. Chum the Waters connects on Moolite, the best target possible. The exhaust was used on Peke, so damage was reduced. First kill secured by Reckless. We do see that's a double kill as he sidesteps the cocoon, looking for the triple. Reckless is on the triple. He's looking for one shot. That's the quarter. He's looking for Despite their good form leading into the playoffs, Fnatic barely scraped by Team Rocat 3 and 2 in the semifinals and fell to their main rival Alliance in the final. Fnatic are dethroned as the champions of Europe. The new kings are Alliance. They will go to the World Championships as the number one seed. It was Fnatic's first time without the split title. Worlds 2014 did not go much better for Reckless and Fnatic. While they had some thrilling games, a heartbreaker against OMG was a dagger for their hopes of making it out of the group. And Angels on the side of Fnatic, they sit on those death spawns as their Nexus goes down and OMG picks up the win over Fnatic. The back-to-back -back international disappointments combined with their loss to Alliance prompted the members of Fnatic to seek something new. With Sinai deciding to retire, Xpeke and Soaz left the team and found Origin. With his esports family scattered and staring down either a significant rebuild on Fnatic or a risk pursuing a spot on Origin, Reckless decided that a move to a more established roster was the best idea. On November 24th, 2014, he transferred to Alliance, later rebranded as Elements. While Fnatic fans were devastated by the news, the Element Super Team was looking stronger than ever. Unfortunately, Reckless's debut playoffs on the new team the was finals. ugly. And they will take this win and deny playoffs from Elements. And Reckless, absolutely not how it ends for Elements. They, oh, lose Reckless again after all of that insult to injury. The Nexus going down. Fnatic have denied Elements a playoff spot in the spring split. Despite coming off of a win in the last split and receiving an upgrade at AD Carry, Elements was a train wreck, struggling with roster issues from day one. Over the course of the spring split, they had over a half a dozen roster swaps, resulting in a seventh place finish, avoiding relegation, but also missing out on playoffs. Yes, this was the game that absolutely cost Elements their chances, but it has been a disappointing split 
for the entirety of the year. Constantly dropping games. They had all those roster shuffles. Nif going to coach. Um, Wicked out, Kevin in. Kevin out, Wicked back. None of the players or team or, or team play ever settled into a routine. Meanwhile, Fnatic's revamped roster was as strong as ever taking first overall in the split and impressing at the midseason invitational. I do love the fight that Fnatic put up. I love their aggression. These guys did not want to go down. The members of Elements pointed the finger at poor communication and a lack of cohesion for their issues. And Reckless was vocal in his displeasure, even making controversial social media posts about the poor state of the team and organization. Things didn't go as they they were planned to be. I think that's just because sometimes things just don't work out, you know, it doesn't have to be someone being a major problem or anything, it just sometimes the puzzle doesn't go together. We were being put in a very tough spot in Elements, we were like fighting for relegations, and we were on the edge of like having to work with each other even if it didn't work, you know, like we were forced to do that because else we would be relegated. When Fnatic offered Reckless a chance to return to the team, he jumped at the chance. Safe to say, he made the right call. Fnatic finished the season with a perfect 18-0 record in the regular season, becoming the first team in LCS history to do so. And our player of the series here of the final is Reckless. I mean, it was incredibly back and forth, but in some games, the 80 carries absolutely made the difference. Penta killed that, of course, pushes it over the edge as well. Well, Groot will slow them down. Glitterlance connects as well. And Reckless plus that. That's a kill to oh, Reckless rather. To... That's a double. He's looking for triple more. Kill. That's a triple. He's looking for four. That's the quadra. He will get it. The reset forward. Looking for a Penta kill. We're in Sweden. The Swedish Penta kill. Kill. It's a Penta kill. Reckless is on fire. Fnatic went to Worlds 2015 red hot and with a mountain of fan support behind them. Despite a shaky start to the group stage, a 3-0 final day netted Fnatic a spot in the quarterfinals, where they upset the Chinese champions, Edward Gaming, 3-0 to advance. Fnatic, they're on to the Nexus, and Fnatic will advance to the semi-finals. The only team to do that three times in the World Championships. It was at Worlds 2015 that Reckless's pocket AD Cannon began to appear, which has since become a signature of his play. Is that an AD Cannon? It is. Oh my goodness, Absolute. this is one of my absolute all-time favorites. It's like, so far up, does have that lightning rush, can reposition very quickly. Is the other style, he's gonna find Elimination. Oh, oh the torn out of the way of the Dark Binding. The Choppers are gonna go down, Elimination gets flashed on. Reckless grabs a kill onto him and Sneaky. Trying so to farming out quite nicely as Reckless going aggressive here on the top side. It's actually the Bilgewater Cutlass as the taunt comes in as well. Lemonation stunned up for a long time and Reckless just following him out. Easy kill. While they lost 3-0 to the Koo Tigers in the semifinals, Reckless and Fnatic had done Europe proud and were returning home as heroes. Sadly, just as things were once again on the up and up for Reckless, another obstacle presented itself. Rainover, Hooney, and Yellowstar all left the team and moved to North America, leaving Fnatic to rebuild a roster around Reckless and Fabiven. The weight of leadership, once resting on Yellowstar's shoulders, now fell to Reckless as he was asked to lead Fnatic into the new era. But I feel like this year I have much more space, much more responsibility, not only in the game or anything that's game related on a personal level, but also just in the house here. Uh, I feel like people are looking up to me more now than they did on previous times. Therefore, I've actually been trying to, in some ways, mimic what Bora did last year with waking up early, being, showing up first, perhaps leading an example in some ways. Despite his experience, it was still a heavy burden, doubly so considering he had to add shot calling to his pile of responsibilities. I want to grow into the captain role more than I've done so far. I feel like with only one month of time doing so, it's been a tough journey, it's been hard to adapt to the role. Although adding talent like Spirit in the offseason, the new roster did not get off to a strong start. Their debut at IEM Cologne was disappointing and were inconsistent during the spring split. There's the unbreakable force there. So Swift is going in, gets the knockup. That means TCT can come in as well. The Wombo Combo will not connect the way they wanted it to. TCT and the rest of the team leading the charge to try and take down. Reckless is devastating. Does not go down. It's only Reckless after Gonsu. That's going to be it. It's an ace for QG Reapers. We knew that shot calling was going to be an issue. Febben said, Reckless and I are stepping up. We're going to fill the shoes that, that Yellowstar left behind. It carries over into game three, and they're just going on too long. Reckless's bot lane synergy with new support, Noxiac, was poor. 
improvement were just not there. The improvement like it was so hard for us to have that jungle support synergy and have that AD, synergy, AD support synergy that we wanted with Noxia. So therefore we just felt like a change was needed. So it wasn't like things were super duper bad with Noxtec. I would say it was still more than fine, but we just felt like if we were to make a replacement there and perhaps perhaps have more of a group of five, we would have higher chances of reaching a higher state of the team in time for IEM, in time for playoffs, and ultimately as well for Worlds. Rookie Swedish support Klai was brought in. With Klai, Fnatic had a strong showing at IEM Katowice, finishing second on the back of Reckless's near undefeated Jin. This is Swift, risky steal. stuff, it's so low, he's going in for the steal. Fnatic are all just so low, they tried to tank it for so long, they kick Swift out of the oh. pit, they do finally lock it down, Fnatic get in there, there we go, Reckless lands the damage, more gonna get taken down eventually, there it is, Reckless finishes him off, gets himself the triple, but oh my word, was that close for Fnatic. By the end of the season, they slipped into the playoffs in sixth defeating Vitality in the first round, but losing to G2 Esports in the semifinals. GG, the Red Hot Rookies will knock off the reigning champs en route to a spring showdown in Rotterdam. Following the frustrating season, Yellowstar returned to the bot lane with Reckless. But while his veteran leadership was welcome, it sadly did little to salvage Fnatic. The team would make the playoffs, but would lose in the semifinals to H2K Gaming. With one more shot at Worlds, Fnatic lost in the regional final 3-0 to the Unicorns of Love. The Nexus is going down, there's nothing left right now. Fnatic, they're gonna get taken out. Unicorns, they're gonna complete the sweep. 27 and a half minutes in for a final showdown with Splice! Because this Fnatic was that cluster, they failed to pull the trigger on the key moments. And losing that final game that denies you a chance to go to the World Finals is honestly heartbreaking. So if there's fans out there for Fnatic, and any of the teams that have missed their spot to Worlds, make sure you reach out to them, show you their support, because that's when they need it the most. Overall, 2016 was a clear low point in Reckless's career. Tasked with helping rebuilding and lead Fnatic, the results were a clear disappointment for fans and the players alike. By the end of the year, many were questioning if Reckless was the right man for the job. Unfortunately, things weren't about to get any easier. Four-fifths of the roster left prior to the 2017 spring split, with Yellowstar heading into retirement, Fabivan back to H2K, and Gamsu and Spirit back to Korea. And yeah, that, that's just my goal. I want, to, I want to win the Worlds because I've been so close already, and I know how to get there, and I know also how to not get there because I went 2015 up, 2016 down, so now it's time to go up again because if I go down, then there's really something wrong. With Reckless as the only remaining member, another full rebuild was surely a daunting task. The new Fnatic welcomed back Soaz, who had played with Reckless during the glory days of 2013 to 2014. The team also brought in veteran jungler Amazing and former SK Gaming mid laner Jaziz at support. Rounding out the roster was the biggest gamble of the lot. Rookie mid laner Caps, a talented but generally inexperienced player. The new Fnatic roster was placed into Group A of the Spring Split, amongst the stiff competition of G2 Esports and Misfits. While Caps had a breakout season and Reckless was once again turning heads, reclaiming his reputation as a fearsome AD carry, with teams often respect banning his cannon. Here it's all too easy for him. Reckless leaping, hopping, skipping, jumping all over the place, and Caps goes godlike. During this time, Reckless became vocal about his struggles with his mental health. The pressures of professional play and leadership weighed heavily on him, and as he had grown as both a player and a person, he was more accepting of the needs to discuss these sensitive issues. He decided to take the off-season to recenter himself with a trip home to Sweden, ensuring he head into the summer split as strong as possible. With Reckless focused and motivated, the 2017 summer split has been an excellent return to the form. Fnatic sit atop their group and Reckless is once again making his mark as one of the most gifted AD carries Europe has ever seen. Some jazz is waiting in the way. Shane baby! Here we go, Reckless delivering! The other ninja right on top of his face, that puppy is going down! Similar to Reckless with the cannon, right? You've got to give him props for playing this champion out so well. Now Sven could be in trouble. He's stunned up by the shuriken, has to flash out, followed by Reckless. The man has no fear, and he gets the kill, but we're checking back in at the Drake distance, but we know how it all ended. Back to live, the action never stops. Reckless this time is on his own, or is he? It's so as tagging in. And now the tables are turned, Trick's out of there, and Reckless on a killing spree. Three and zero, looking for expect. It's never just one member of Fnatic. I like that, Pyra. It's never just one member. Redemption as well from Jesus. And now we come to today. 
Through the ups and downs, highs and lows, Reckless has emerged as a leader, a figurehead for the league community and the face of a franchise. Each step along the way was needed, from his early successes to the difficulties of loss and the struggle of leadership to bring him to this moment. And still, the journey is far from over. After all, there's still a EU throne to reclaim. And after that, so much more. Thanks for watching our telling of Reckless's story. We love producing these videos and hope you enjoy them just as much. Is there a story you think that we should tell? Leave your suggestions in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more great content.